Welcome to the Mythbusters After Show. We are taking your questions about the episode Dangerous Driving. Let's get started. First question, be honest here, guys. Do you talk and drive? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't talk holding on to the cell phone. I have hands-free in my car. And, yeah. Same here. I, I do find that, it, in spite of what we showed on the episode, that uh, driving in the open freeway, not so much of a problem. Um, you know, even reacting quickly to, to things, it's, you're, you're sort of, where, where I ran into problems were, um, in that case, were directions or, or things like that where you kind of had to, you, you really had to do something other than just react. Well, but I mean, we were looking at worst case scenarios. It's not, you know, driving with traffic and light traffic on a freeway that's the problem. It's when something goes wrong and your reaction time gets really slow. Uh, all right, next question. The questions you asked during the tests often led to hilarious answers. Did you learn a lot about each other? Did you play a musical instrument as a child, Jamie? I had a, a tuba in the bathroom right next to the toilet that I would play when I was, you know, doing number two or something. <laughs> Not really. Um, I am ceaselessly amazed at Jamie's ability to, when given a personal question, give an objective and general answer. Like, do you eat cereal for breakfast? And he'll say something like, lots of people eat cereal for breakfast. I might be one of them. <laughs> Next question. Why didn't you score the answer, why didn't you score the answer accuracy as well as the driving accuracy? Because we were more concerned about the driving accuracy. Yeah. That was the point. Right. The point was the distraction, not how deeply the distraction affected our brains in answering the actual questions. It was driving quality. Although, you know, if you wanted to be fussy about it, you could say, well, uh, you could just not care about the answers to the questions and not think very hard about them. And, and Clearly that didn't happen in our case. Um, next question. I still didn't understand the addition tests you did. What was up with that? Okay. Let me explain. It, it is a way of functionally going back to a previous memory in your brain. So instead of, if I say two and four, you say six, and then I say eight, and you don't add eight to six, you add it to the previous number I gave you, which is four. So the answer is 12. And then if I say three, you add it to the eight that I gave you. So basically all you're doing is adding each number I give you to its predecessor, which means you have to do addition, but then throw out the addition it's complex. It's exactly the reason you had trouble with it is the reason we used it as the driving test addition test, because it's tough. Yeah, it's exercising your short-term memory. Uh, next question. Jamie, they want to know why you need a trillion dollars rather than, say, a modest billion. If a crystal ball could tell you about the truth, about your life, your future, or anything else, what would you want to know? What, uh, what would be... Uh... A guaranteed way of making uh, a trillion dollars uh, immediately. <laughs> well, um, I'd need a trillion because then I would be able to buy my own country and proclaim myself emperor. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. The simulator was cool, but did it feel like real driving? It, I personally found it made me, I, I got motion sickness in it quite quickly. Um, that, that lag, which I'm glad didn't affect a lot of our test subjects, um, was a little bit uh, tough on me, but you did much better. Yeah, it uh, it was impressively effective, but you know, obviously there's no acceleration, there's no g forces or any of that kind of thing, uh, and, and and so it was just a simulation. But I mean, you did get involved in it, and you noticed people like, oh, looking around and stuff. I mean, it was fantastic as far as a simulator experience goes. It was right up there akin to flying a, an airplane simulator. Just, again, you didn't have the motion gimbal stuff. Uh, oh, next card. The simulator looked easy. Were you surprised that keep, people kept failing? Well, um, I, I think that the fact that... <laughs> this is a very interesting question, because it's basically like, I disagree with your results, because from the television, it didn't look that hard. I think the results demonstrate that it was actually a pretty accurate simulator and pretty difficult to complete the test. 
Yeah, I thought it was legitimate. I mean, it wasn't exactly a driving experience for a lot of reasons, but it did show very clearly that you, uh, most people seem to only be able to deal with one subject at a time, one thing that is occupying yeah. their brain at a time, and focus on that. And so, uh, no, like, it's not surprising that they would screw up because no. that's what the t test was designed to show. Yeah, a worst case scenario. Uh, next question. I've been wanting to test driving in reverse for years, so thank you. You're hey, welcome. You're welcome. Next question. Why was Adam better than Jamie at driving in reverse? Well, uh, Jamie was actually able to maintain a higher speed than I. It was only in the maneuverability, and I think, I don't know, was it because your uh, your titanium endoskeleton's getting old? Yeah, yeah I, you know, it's it's hard to say. The, uh, the funny thing for me, the more interesting thing, is that uh, whenever we get into those situations where our skills are, are uh, compared to each other, it's, it's often by just a little bit, which it was in this mm -hmm. case. It was like five miles an hour or something like that difference. And, you know, it, it's a toss-up. In any given situation, one of us will do slightly better than the other, and that was just one of those, you know, that we have slight, slightly different kinds of abilities in certain areas. Yeah. Next question. How did this rank in the crazy driving stuff you've done? I have to put this... Reverse driving, the final test Jamie and I together as one of the most fun and difficult driving maneuver tests we've ever done. It was awesome. But in terms of crazy, flat out crazy, you know, like driving on two wheels. Driving uh, on uh, manhole covers. Yes, uh, driving through uh, a line of traffic with a truck with a, with a shovel on the front of it. Riding a motorcycle on, on the water. water. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just... it was fun, but uh, <laughs> if you want crazy, Yes, uh, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's we low on the crazy, crazy scale, yeah. high on the fun scale. Next question. It seems like you made a lot of effort to up the visual drama of the last test. Is that something you enjoy? Absolutely. Um, personally, for me, the fact that there's cardboard boxes in the way, and I mentioned them, and then I hit them, and then the fruit stand, which I hit, and you can see falling through my back window, that kind of stuff is just, it's great color. Um, but more than that, it's, it, 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 it it involves you in the storytelling because it helps you see the marks that you're going to be hitting narratively. It's, it's really fun. Uh, last question. If you reversed into someone in a car park, would you leave a note or would you sneak away? Leave a note or try to track them down without question. Yeah, what kind of sociopath are you even asking such a question? Jeez, I'm crow. Where are your parents? This is clearly <laughs> someone who doesn't drive yet. It's like, if you did... Uh, if you hit somebody on the road, would you do a hit and run or? <laughs> right. Do you run over them again to eliminate the evidence? That's uh, depends terrible. on my mood, actually. Uh, no, it doesn't. He's joking. <laughs> He's joking. We're going to leave it there before we say anything more compromising. Thanks for joining us for the Mythbusters After Show. We will see you guys next time.